sedge grass and bracken, a stream with trout in it, stone walls, wild country with a wild history. If you were dropped here by parachute, would you know where it is? What sort of people live here? Or whether you'd gone back a thousand years? You'd find a clue in a wide wall running along the edges of the hills. These stones were put there by the Romans. For this is Hadrian's Wall, going from Solway to the Tyne. And then the castles, Bamborough frowning down. Home of the kings of Northumbria, and the famous house of Percy and Hotspur. And on the coast, Dunstanborough, defying the invader and supporting the Lancastrian roads against the York castles, battlefields, and a tough race of men. But from over the sea came the softening influence of Christianity. From the island of Iona came St. Aidan to bring his teachings to England. A priory, Lindisfarne, has stood there since those days. And back across the coast are the great religious monuments. Some say Durham Cathedral is the finest Norman work in the world. So this country and its people have softened down the years. There's much good land and much good stock upon it. But underneath the fair exterior, coal to raise steam. Great projects, great men. Against a background of the Durham coal fields, George Stevenson was born, the pit boy who gave railways to the world. Man and his background, growing up together. So to the present. Tom Stobart has been convalescing here, the country of his boyhood. It's a good place to exercise a shot-up leg and forget an ambush in Ethiopia. Take a friend along, especially one from the neighbouring steelworks at Consett, and the conversation turns on men in industry. And if it's thirsty work, nearby is another bit of useful background. Your family certainly knew how to organise themselves. They most certainly did. Shall we have a drink? Yes, come on, what are we waiting for? Oh, of course. They close at two on Sundays. Whenever I come to England now, it always seems to be closing time. They'll be nationalising beer soon. That'll be the day. Come on, let's go down to the river. Right. How's the leg standing up? Okay. Just a moment. Let me a glass here. Thank you. That's Harry Rain from the works. Let's go and meet him. Mm. Mind your leg. Harry! I've got someone here I want you to meet. This morning, and they're like a butler ship. Tom, this is Harry Rain from the milking shop. Tom Stobart. How do you do? How do you do, Harry? Tom's up here spying on us, Harry. He's making a film of the concert and wants to see how steel workers spend their days out. You couldn't have come to a finer place. I see you're like me and enjoy the fresh air. Rather, after working all week in the heat and dust of the milking shop, I think that's the grand way to spend one's day off. Do a lot of you fish? Yes, of course, some chaps prefer to play golf or go to cricket matches. Or maybe take the family for a run in the car. Or do a little gardening. Why should we be different to anyone else? Well, the miners around here always used to go in for whippets. I don't think steel workers go in for whippets very much. I don't know why. Is it important? Not really. I was just looking for something that's typical. 
But of course, what's typical never really exists. I told him that the only thing that's typical around here is beer. Can I have it, Tommy. Down it goes. Aye, but where does it go? <laughs> typical blast furnace, darling. These gardeners have all got hollow legs. <laughs> Nothing like grown prize leaks to give a man a thirst, George. If I could stop a pint like that, Tommy, I think I could raise a prize leak. <laughs> well, good night, Joe. Good night, Tom. Good night. Well, good night. Good night. Good night. What a wonderful night. Just a moment. Isn't that the glow from the works? I remember that as a boy, but I don't think I ever saw inside. Well, you'll see it tomorrow. I'll call for you at 8.30 at the Crown and Cross Sword. Next morning, Tom Stobart set out for the works themselves. A new experience for a man so used to spending his life in the wide open spaces. Waiting in the managing director's office, there's a moment to see how the past has grown into the present. Sorry I've kept you waiting, Mr. Stobart. I'm rather in a hurry as I have to leave for Sweden in the morning. That's quite all right, sir. I was just looking at some of your old pictures. The works has changed a lot since those days. It's always changing and growing. Won't you come and sit down? Thank you. No, thank you. I hope you don't mind my asking you what may seem a dumb question. But when I was a small boy, I seem to remember that you had eight blast furnaces here, and now you've only got three. They do more than the work of eight. As a matter of fact, since the war, we've spent 20 million pounds on expansion, and are planning to spend 30 million pounds more. Excuse me. Good morning, sir. Have you heard yet whether the pig iron we sent off to Austria has arrived? No. I'm arranging for you and Pearson and Amos to be available to go over and see the experiments. I was thinking that we ought to try a similar experiment in Sweden. Is there much red tape about sending pig iron there? Well, there wasn't to Austria, and I don't suppose it's much different for Sweden. It's only a question of clearing the Board of Trade and the customs people. Yes, that's quite all right. Right, sir. I'll see to it. I think you'd better carry on where the pig iron left off. Not 
morning, Flight 3. We'll go in a moment. Talking about Jarro, have you met Tom Stobart? How do you do? Yeah. Tom's going down to Jarrow this afternoon. Mm. So what began as a tour of the vital things of the past becomes a tour of the vital things of the present. Looking around, you couldn't find anything so obviously vital as steel. How much and how many people's jobs depend on it. The ore, which used to be mined near Consett, is long since worked out. So nowadays it comes from Labrador, Sweden, Newfoundland, French Equatorial Africa, all unloaded at Tyne Dock by special plant into bunkers. And then into the ore train at the pressing of a button. 56 tons to the truck. A sort of perpetual motion business, this. Ships are being built of steel to carry the ore from which they'll make more steel to build more ships to carry ore and so on. Ore from foreign lands and foreign mining companies financed by British Steel. There's two and a half million pounds worth here, enough for about 16 weeks. Makes you think. Well, tonight's the big night. Harry Rain has promised to take Tom over to the melting shop to spend the night shift on the job. They have a rendezvous at the smelter's arms where the local yarns have started up already. The two pit lads were out one Monday having a bender and had thrown out the pub at three o'clock in the afternoon. Just when they were thrown out, got the corner end and a funeral cottage was going past. One said the other one, Here, Geordie, he says, I wonder where he's been. His mate said, Didn't he see Duff, man? He says, we now we see the one in the box, his mate's driving. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Harry. Hello, Harry. What's going to happen? Not before going to work, Tom, thanks. We ought to be going anyway. Why, this new ship doesn't start till 10 o'clock? Yes, but we work the buddy system. Buddy system? What's that? It's a custom here. A man can clock off early if his relief's clocked on. This gives them a chance to get a pint before closing time. I must say, that sounds a very sensible idea. So long as there's someone there to do the job, it's all okay by the management. Well, come on, let's get cracking. Good night, Peter. Good night, Tom. Good night. And so, a new adventure starts. An adventure into the awe-inspiring guts of steelmaking.
Where the steel is made, open hearth furnaces. Wonder how many times George has done that. Thousands, probably. He says it takes years to make a first hand, but it's a good job. You develop an eye knowing how the furnace is getting along. Can't describe it. Like cooking, in a way. Bit of this, bit of that, just to get the flavour quite right. Prefer an experienced chef to a beginner with a fork any day. Ah, book. Well, yes, sir. I think I'd better take a note or two. Now then, steel equals iron refined. Carefully controlled carbon, most phosphorus and sulfur lost, ferromanganese and so on added to specification. In goes a spoon for a test. This is George's test for his own. Tip it out. And it fizzes like soda water. That means something to George. It's the same sort of thing as knowing when you've forgotten something by seeing it in your wife's face before she opens her mouth. Must keep one jump ahead. Once these tests were all they had, and they made jolly good steel too. Of course, in a basic industry, no room for mistakes. So, science. Every industry worth its salt moves with the times. A small test piece, and they'll get you accurate analysis in no time. Ah, oh, I see they're charging again. Better go and talk to Alan.
on they go, these men, day and night, never stop. Brown sugar instead of sand, good old civil service. Hope they don't nationalize beer, sand in the beer, no doubt. And the baby's late. Well, babies know what they're up to, usually. Men of steel, members of the great steel family. Hope they don't muck about with this family, try to interfere. Vital sort of job, blasting, melting, rolling, forging. And then the end of it all, their work. Great ships, bridges, things we live by. Steel spiders attending the splitting of an atom. Steel ears listening to outer space. Men of concert, eh? Real family show. Not number two unit Northeastern Division. chunk of steel you got there. What are you going to paint it black for? Well, I didn't do it, but I hear they're going to paint them green again. Well, that's good. Did they ever change them? Well, I must go and get in. 